Today, I want to talk about memorizing music. Most of us probably can memorize music fairly well, but when any sort of stressor is introduced, like recording yourself or playing for others, it seems to all fall apart. And for me, every performance up until about halfway through college was always tainted by one or two little memory slips. Not a big deal, but it wasn't until I put together this three phase process that I could perform memory perfect most of the time. If you find yourself in the same boat with just little memory slips here and there, give this process a try. It's a little mechanical, but the overall idea is to make it much more difficult to play for memory in our practice so that when we play it normally for memory, even if we're stressed or nervous, our memory is completely dependable. Before I begin the memory process, I make sure that I have a good overview of the piece and that the notes and rhythm are basically in my fingers. So this means I would have already decided on my finger numbers. Some might change, of course, and that's okay, but I definitely have that foundation set. If it's a very technically challenging piece, I might not have it performance ready yet, but it's really well on its way. So that's where you wanna be before starting this memory process. Once the piece is ready, I begin phase one. So I'm gonna use this Chopin waltz as an example. I typically focus on two to four bars at a time, depending on the complexity and texture of the piece. For simplicity's sake today, I'll just take two bars at a time. So first I'll memorize my left hand. And once I have it memorized, I like to repeat it about five times to reinforce it. Now, five times is an arbitrary number and you can change that for sure. It's just what I typically do. Then I switch, memorize my right hand and repeat, and then put them together and repeat again. Then I move on to the next two to four measures and just repeat that process. So once you finish those measures, you combine all the measures that you've previously memorized and you play it through slowly one time. If your piece is pages and pages long, do not repeat from the beginning every time at the end of this process. Divide it into smaller sections and then once you finish a section, no more repetition back to the beginning. Repeat back to the beginning of that section. And you'll keep going like this until the entire piece is memorized. In music, sections are often repeated note for note, like the return of an A section. And if it is an exact repeat, you don't have to redo this process. A up to A minor. And then D, D minor, second inversion. Notice that it's a scale, A, B, C. And then another scale. So it's kind of a scale going from A to F. And make sure also to play and learn from memory the fingering that you've used. So don't change the fingering as you're memorizing it. Up to D. G. And then G7. Unless your piece is very short, phase one will take more than one day. So set a daily time limit for memory work because 
our brains really can't be super focused for very long. I recommend no more than 15 minutes at a time unless you're under a deadline. Um, and that's all that phase one is. When I do this for an entire piece, I find it's fairly well memorized, but it's not super solid or reliable yet. And that's where the next phases come in. Phase two is a test and reinforce phase where I take everything I've memorized and focus on memorizing it more and better. There are many different ways to do this, but I'll suggest four. One, divide your music into small sections, and the length of these sections depends on how long the piece is and how detailed you want your sections to be. This waltz that we've been using uh, feels pretty sectional already, right? So it's really easy to divide. I would do about seven sections. Although the more insecure you are with a piece, the more sections you're going to want to use. Once you have your sections, your task is to be able to start at any section without looking at the score. So section three, section seven, Being able to start smack dab in the middle of a piece for memory is a great sign that you truly do have it memorized. Uh, you could even make a game out of it with the dice or something. The second way you can test your memory is by playing very, very, very slowly, for memory of course. This makes your motor memory less reliable and reinforces everything up here. If you fumble when you're doing this, which probably you will, take out the score, practice the part that went awry, rememorize it, then try again slowly for memory. So doing this just points out all the parts that are a little less solid in your memory. Third, count out loud while playing for memory. For me, this simple thing just makes it a bit harder to play successfully for memory, which makes it easier to play for memory when I don't count out loud. Just adds another layer to deal with. And finally, fourth, do lots of performance run-throughs. What equals a lot? Well, it's hard to say, but for me, I'd aim for at least five good run-throughs. And for someone who is new to performing, I'd aim for much higher. So in a run-through, you go from the beginning to the end without stopping, no matter what. If you make a technical mistake or a memory blip happens, this is great practice for moving ahead and faking it until you get back on track. And that's a skill, you have to work on that. So during your run-through, no faces if you make a mistake, no monologues about how you just played it perfectly two seconds ago, no audible sighs or frustration sounds. You want a poker face. Nothing is wrong, everything is fine. And once you feel ready for an additional challenge, record yourself during this run through and or play it for someone to get yourself a little nervous. Okay, so that was phase two, test and reinforce. Phase three is test and reinforce extreme edition. Now, not every piece or person needs to go through phase three because it honestly can be quite torturous at first. I began this when I had to memorize organ music. As you might know, organists use their hands and feet. So there's always so much going on and I was having trouble performing pieces with no memory slips. So again, you don't have to do this. I certainly don't do this for every piece and situation, but if you've tried memorizing before and always seem to have little slips here and there, give it a try. So there are two things to do in phase three. Number one is the hardest for sure. I call it say and play. So you're gonna take two to four bars at a time. First, play the left hand while you say or sing the notes in the right. E. A, B, C, C, D, E, F. Repeat it. E, A, B, C, C, D, E, F. And 
then on the third time through, actually play the right hand while you continue to say the right hand. E, A, B, C, C, D, E, F. Then switch. Play the right hand while you say the left. When there are chords, you don't have to say all the notes. You could just say A minor or A, or you could say all the notes just really fast and kind of out of rhythm. A, A minor, D, D second inversion, and then repeat this in the same manner. A, A minor, D, D second inversion, Finally, end by playing hands together slowly. Obviously, this needs to be done at a very slow tempo and it takes a ton of brain power. But for me, it was close to a 99.9% .9 guarantee that I could play it successfully no matter how nervous I was. The second thing in phase three is simply writing out the notes for memory without the help of the keyboard nearby. Now this is harder than it sounds because you wanna write out all the notes, the rhythm, and even the dynamic and expression marks. Don't feel like you have to do the entire piece, especially if it's long. I tend to focus on parts that I just don't feel super confident about. Again, I want to reiterate that phase three is no joke and definitely not always necessary. In fact, sometimes it might work against you because it can be really, really frustrating, but it did help me a lot. So I wanted to share it here with you. In general, when playing for memory, if something happens, always, always, always look ahead to the next section. Never go back and repeat what you just messed up. I have witnessed performances that went on for twice as long as they should have, simply because they had a memory slip, not a big deal, but instead of moving ahead, they went back to try to fix it in a performance and they kept getting tripped up on the same exact part every single time. And it just gets worse because then your brain starts going into overdrive, you panic, and you don't know how to get out of the memory loop. So always move ahead past the memory slip, even if it's a, sec a whole section ahead. And then I want you to know that the more you practice the act of memorizing a piece, the easier and quicker the process becomes. Even in phase three, just know that it does get easier and we do get better at memorizing and playing from memory. So good luck, keep working on it. Let me know if you plan on trying phase three and I'll see you next time.